Welcome to the worldwide free seminar of the Family Dog Project, live from Budapest. The event is proudly sponsored by Purina. So welcome back everybody. I trust that you are all refreshed and uh, looking forward to these next five talks in this marathon topic, which is going to be called human-dog relationship. So this is a relief because probably this is the most interesting to all of us. Our first uh, talk will be given by Dr. Marta Gacci and the uh, um, title of her talk is Eyes or Nose, which navigates our dogs. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. Uh, we all know that uh, our dogs have a very excellent sense of smell. Specially trained dogs can uh, detect drugs and explosives. And when they do so, they use their noses from up close to the target. And there's also evidence that uh, there are dogs who are able to track their prey from very far uh, distances, from even a few kilometers. What we don't know is if our companion dogs, our pets, uh, can use their, dog, uh, their noses in problem-solving situations from just a few meters in our homes or in our department laboratory tests. So that's the question we would like to address and what we addressed in our research project. The aim of the project was to observe the reaction of uh, companion dogs to two different kinds of problem-solving situation, situations. They had to solve two, research, two search problems. They had to find their owners and a piece of food without using any visual cues. So they could only solve the problem through sound detection. And the dogs were tested in both situations in, uh, at three different distances, from zero meter, that's nose touching uh, distance, one meter and three meters. And there were several trials, three trials, in each uh, type of uh, distances. Of course, the major question was if dogs are successful in these situations or not. So if they are able to find the targets or not. Another question which uh, we wanted to answer, if they learn during these trials, if they can improve their performance during the repeated trials, and again, we wanted to know if they use the same or different strategies during the trials. If they, maybe they would switch between the strategies. Maybe they try to use their olfactory abilities, and later on they would switch and they would think that, okay, if I could locate the owner this position in the last trial, then maybe uh, he would be seated again here, so I can find, I can search uh, him here again, instead of using their noses. So, we tested 30 adult pet dogs of various breeds uh, in two experiments, the owner and the food experiment. These experiments were carried out in a fixed order with a short break uh, in an empty room where the air condition was uh, turned off and the windows were closed. In the first experiment, three humans, one of them was the owner, so three humans were covered by a sheet. They were seated um, in the three equally spaced positions, left, middle, and right. And in the second experiment, we used uh, three pots as potential target places. And one of these pots were baited. One of these pots was baited uh, by a one centimeter piece of hot dog. And the pot, uh, all pots have a big hole on the bottom, and they were uh, placed upside down on the saucer, and on the saucer there was the piece of hot dog. The dogs couldn't see the hot dog, couldn't see the owner because they were covered, they were hidden. They had to use their uh, noses to find it. I would show you the um, experimental setup. So the A locations would be the 
left position, the middle position, the right position, that's the start uh, point. And both the owner and the food were hidden in each location once. So that's how the three times three, uh, altogether nine trials would come up. The order of the location were determined semi-randomly that neither the same distance nor the same position was repeated on two consecutive trials. First of all, before the test procedure, we wanted to run a visual control because we, of course, we were sure that dogs wanted to uh, find the hot dog. But what about the owner? Uh, it wasn't sure, we were not sure that, that, okay, the dogs would really want to go to their owner, approach their owner, because that was our question, if they can find it, but we don't, uh, we're not sure if they want to find him or her. So, with a set of different subjects, we ran a visual control pre-test uh, at only the three meter distance. And it was otherwise the same procedure, but without the cover. And in 87% uh, of the trials, dogs were successful. That means they approached their own owner and not the other persons. So okay, we were happy. Dogs are motivated uh, to find their owners. Another problem, another issue uh, had to be addressed. First of all, uh, now uh, using the real subject, it's if they were afraid of the something covered by a sheet in an unfamiliar empty room. So you can see this thing here. Maybe dogs just wouldn't like to approach it. So we wanted to habituate them uh, with the situation. So the owner called the dog from inside. Then the experimenter allowed the dog to walk on a long leash to the owner, and what happened, you can see, is the dogs went through the, do the room to the opposite door because they couldn't find the owner using their eyes. They wanted to find the owner using visual cues. Okay, you can say that's one dog. No, that's not just one. So the dog could go, went through the owner, it was just 20 centimeter, and then the experimenter had to show the dog, okay, that's your owner, please. And it's not that the dog was afraid of this something covered by a sheet. Now they, she's happy, it's okay, and again, and again, so that was very strange, very surprising even for us. But what's happening? There's nothing else, just the owner in the empty room. And they, even in this situation, couldn't find it. Okay, no, that one, I can't believe. So, dogs seem to look for the owner visually, and they didn't find the owner based on their sound. And it seemed that they concluded that the owner has left through the other door. So, now let's see the test procedure. Again, the experimenter and the dog waited outside. Uh, the owner and two same-sex helpers were seated. The owner called for the dog, and then the experimenter and then the dog entered. They waited behind the starting line for 15 seconds. The dog was supposed to sniff. Who knows what happened? It seems. She's really thinking about the problem. And now she made her choice. That was a wrong one. And now you can see she's searching for the owner using the nose from up close to the potential targets. Again, the food trial, that's a, that was a one meter uh, owner trial, not, that's a zero meter food trial. Always the first choices were noted. That's the first position the dog began walking towards. That was a correct choice. So what do you think about the results? As we all, I think, expected, both in the case of the owner and the food, dogs could find the target uh, from the zero 
meter distance. What about the one meter and the three meters distances? What do you think? Okay, in the meantime, while you are making your bets, uh, I tell you that there was no correlation between the owner and the food uh, triers. That means that the dogs who were good at the owner triers were not necessarily good in the food triers and vice versa. And there were, we couldn't find learning effect. That is, uh, the performance of the dog, dogs didn't improve during the trials. So that's the result. Dogs could find the owner when it was seated at one meter distance, but they couldn't find the owner from three meters, and they couldn't find the food from one meter and three meters. Okay, we are surprised, I think, but okay, let's have a deeper look at the results. What you can see here is that, okay, there was three distances and three choices. So one correct choice would be the chance level. That's try and error. Uh, at the zero meter distance, most dogs typically found the owner three times. Their performance uh, was between two and three correct choices. At the one meter distance, it was between one and two, but it was above chance level still. But at the three meter distance, that was just chance level. So that was a decreasing performance by the distance. Okay, and what's happened in the meantime? All the, most of the incorrect choices were based on the owner's previous position. That is, dogs preferred to go where they could locate the owner in the previous trials. So, what can we conclude from this? First, the dogs need, or prefer, who knows, to get very close to the target, to really precisely pinpoint the source of the scent. And uh, that their success depends on either the characteristics of the stimulus or the testification, the per, uh, procedure. And they tend to switch between strategies. They tend to use their noses and tend to find out other solutions. Okay, but we must stress that the lack of success in this testification doesn't necessarily mean the lack of capacity. So we can't tell, based on our results, that dogs are not able to find the owners at three meters distance only based on their olfactory abilities. Because we can't tell that that's the case. What if dogs were just not aware of the task? They could believe that, okay, I need to wait here for a while, and then I can go there and have a close sniff from up close. We couldn't really observe the dogs sniffing during the waiting period. So we need to run follow-up studies, maybe with specially trained dogs, but what I would like to show you very briefly now is a different setup. What we did is just we dropped the middle targets. We used, of course, new subjects. We observed new dogs. And there were, again, owner and full targets. There were only two potential positions. And we used only the three meter distance uh, situation. Uh, the order of the positions, and that's very important here, was, um, again, semi-randomly determined. Of course, the owner had to sit five times on the left and five times on the right, and uh, uh, not more than twice at the same position. But most importantly, uh, never the, neither no, the owner nor the food was ever placed at the same position in the first two trials, just not to uh, push the dog to one side. You can see here that was a successful trial. But we found, again, the performance was a chance level. So that's only chance level, even if it seems to be a little bit 
uh, bigger, but uh, that's not statistically significantly different from chance. But finally, we found some learning effect in this case, only in the case of the older trials. So it seemed that in the last five trials, dogs were successful and they could find the owners. It means that maybe they learned how to use their noses and that they don't have any other chance to find the owner just to use their noses. But we wanted to have an even deeper look at the data trial by trial and that was a very surprising result here. Dogs were the very best in the very first trial. Almost 80% of the trials were successful. What happened here in the second trial? So that's what happened. In the very first trial, dogs used their noses. In the second trial, they went to the position where the owner was seated in the first trial. And that always was wrong. Because in the very first two trials, uh, the owner was never seated uh, in the same position. And then from the three, third trials on, dogs gradually learned to use their noses again and just drop the uh, win-stay strategy and try to use their noses from now on. So what, what can we uh, summarize? How can we summarize all these results? We always claim that uh, the dominant sense of our dogs is that their sense of smell, that they live in the, in the world of, of smells. Yeah, maybe, but it seems that it's not automatic. It seems that they prefer to use visual cues sometimes. It seems that they prefer to use cognitive strategies. They prefer to think about the problem. And they need to switch their noses on in order to use it efficiently. Uh, so that was the project. And uh, I must tell you that uh, my student, my American student from Boston, Zita Polgar, was the most important person in this project. Uh, she did a fascinating job. And uh, she's the first author of this publication. And of course, I'd like to uh, thank all helpers and who has suffered a lot under the sheet. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Manta, for this wonderful talk.